years ago when I was, you know, a, a, a beardless boy, and when um, I visit all the time, and I wrote this in 2005 on a visit, and um, an important thing happened then, which uh, the poem will deal with. This poem is entitled Eulogy. Third day of floods, tornadoes, lightning, and hail. A 16-year-old girl had already died in an Orange County mudslide. I turn on Peter Jennings to see if this unnatural Los Angeles weather was nationally newsworthy. It was the top story. My friends in the Pacific Northwest must be laughing their damn fool asses off. Sunny Southern California. Ha! Hug a palm tree for me down there. Right, sucker, if you can dodge the fiery bolts from the blue. In the kitchen, microwaving asparagus, I hear through the radioactive hum the announcement, a writer has died. Who, I ask my host. Hunter S. Thompson. Holy shit. Hunter Thompson, who's ruined more young lives than Thomas Chatterton, Ozzy Osbourne, Arthur Rambeau, Jim Morrison, Ernest Hemingway, and Kurt Cobain put together. When, in the spring of 1980, Rolling Stone did a piece on you, plugging the god-awful movie Where the Buffalo Roam, and you said your current favorite drink was Scotch and NyQuil, yeah, I ran to Super Sadie's for a bottle of black velvet and some cold medication. And I don't even like Scotch. So imagine what it tastes like with the bilious green sludge that is NyQuil. I was drunk, sleepy, and nauseous but my sinuses were never so clear. Hunter Thompson, who, in spite of my background as a first-year dropout of the SI Newhouse School of Communications at Syracuse University, taught me that no journalist worth his salt ever re researched a story unless totally fried on acid. A technique that miraculously worked when I got my first printed piece ever in the LA Weekly, and also explains why it was nine years before I was published again. Hunter Thompson, who regardless of my first perforated ulcer, I still admired unreservedly as the ultimate unrepentant reprobate for his refusal after his assault drug bust to cop a plea and go on Oprah as the first leg of the inspiring story of my recovery from drugs and alcohol tour. Like all the other pathetic, whiny Hollywood losers who don't have the guts to pay the piper when the axe comes down, and thus are all at the Oscars tonight. Oh, Hunter, you never told us what you really felt. Were you sad living in the O'Farrell Theater, the porn palace run by the infamous Mitchell Brothers, in San Francisco for two bloody years, quote, researching a book, unquote, when you couldn't even get it up? Were you angry when the cheap-ass binding of the Curse of Lono came undone, making an intact copy of that piece of tripe the most valuable first edition in your canon of work? Was it really hip and back pain that drove you over the edge? You, the man who had his teeth kicked down his throat by the Hell's Angels. Oh, Hunter, will you ever send that story racketing down the mojo wire to Jan Wenner's office at the Rolling Stone? But I forgot, there is no mojo. We have the internet now. And Jan is at the Academy Awards show with his hand wedged up Scarlett Jail Johansson's butt crack while laughing uproariously at the antics of a network-sanitized Chris Rock. And Gonzo is dead. Oh, Hunter, who can forget your immortal motto to live by? When the going gets weird, the weird blow their fucking brains out. No, wait, that's not right. Oh, Hunter. Sure. Yeah, uh, for another? Yeah.